My name's Brandon and this is Nickelodeon Video Game History, a show where I take a look back on all of the video games based on Nickelodeon shows and retrospectively review them. After a week where I covered not one, but two newly released video games, it's back to our regularly scheduled programming. Continuing our chronological journey through Nickelodeon, this week we come to Rocco's Modern Life, Spunky's Dangerous Day on the SNES. Rocco's Modern Life debuted in late 1993, running for four seasons and garnering a solid following. After the success of Doug, Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy in the very first wave of Nicktoons, Rocco ushered in a second wave alongside R Real Monsters. It often pushed the boundary of what was acceptable for a children's show, which no doubt helped it gain its cult following with older audiences. Despite this success, Spunky's Dangerous Day was the only video game made about the show. After an onslaught of Ren and Stimpy games, it's nice to have a little change of scenery. I have to admit, those games have been starting to wear me down. Spunky's Dangerous Day was released in April of 1994. However, according to Wikipedia, the game didn't come to Canada until 1997. Not sure if I actually believe that. Interestingly, the developers here were Viacom New Media. As the name suggests, they were part of the Viacom family, just like Nickelodeon. As a result, they worked on a lot of games based on Viacom-owned shows, like Beavis and Butthead. Spunky's Dangerous Day wouldn't be the only Nick games they'd develop, as they'd also put out Guts and Real Monsters, two games we'll be covering in the near future. Of the reviews I managed to find, Spunky's Dangerous Day has an average review score of roughly a 6.6 out of 10. That seems pretty good, but as I've discovered, using reviews from this era of gaming is almost useless. Some of the Ren and Stimpy games have been around the same mark, while also being absolutely atrocious. Hopefully the one and only Rocco's Modern Life game fares a little better. According to a report from EGM in 1994, Spunky's Dangerous Day was actually made while the show was still relatively early in development. The only aspect of Rocco's Modern Life that had aired publicly by the time this game had entered production in early 1993 was the pilot. This meant that they had to design most of the visuals around concept art. Also, references are only made to Season 1, however, to me it felt like the game wasn't too heavy on the references anyway. Personally, I think the game captures the essence of the show pretty well. All of the characters look how they should, and they even went the extra mile of adding in short voice clips for the pre-level cutscenes. The one aspect of the production side of things that makes it obvious that this game was developed before the show had released is the music. I like the music here, but none of the tracks ever really feel like they were trying to emulate or capture the tone of the music you hear in the show. Regardless, this was a pretty big vote of confidence in Rocco's Modern Life from Nickelodeon. Not often do you see a video game go into development before a show has even aired. In this day and age, your show needs to be a smash hit before it gets one. When you first load up Spunky's Dangerous Day, you get the customary password option, which acts as the level select for the game, but it also has something pretty unique. You can choose whether to play this game on hard or easy mode. This is run of the mill these days, but for a platformer on the SNES, you weren't getting many difficulty options. The gameplay is sort of unique too. I was expecting this to be yet another stock standard 2D platformer, like almost all of the Ren and Stimpy games, but the formula focuses a lot more on puzzle solving here. The goal of each level is to guide Spunky to the Golden Fire Hydrant. To do so, you'll need to thwart enemies and use a plethora of environmental objects to make sure Rocco's beloved dog stays safe. Essentially, this is an entire game built around escort missions. Everybody loves escort missions, right? Right? I'm getting war flashbacks to those awful levels in Buckaroos where Stimpy had to guide Ren to the end. Admittedly, Spunky's Dangerous Day manages to be better than those irredeemable levels. The tools at Rocco's disposal include being able to jump, kick, and punch. By utilizing one of these three actions, you'll be able to get Spunky to his destination safely. Additionally, you can pick up Spunky. This is handy to save him from running into certain danger, as well as changing the direction you want him to head in. The first gigantic red flag for the game comes when you realize how terrible the movement for Rocco is. It's so incredibly slippery. I get that Rocco isn't exactly doing your typical platforming here, but damn, some semblance of control would have been nice. It really feels like Rocco is constantly running on ice. They might as well have made the game one massive ice level considering how poor the movement is. The physics make trying to do the most basic tasks a nightmare. Jumping onto a simple platform under no pressure is genuinely challenging. 
It's just unfathomably bad. There's no possible way I can overstate how badly it all controls. Heck, even the password select screen controls poorly. Instead of just, you know, letting me pick letters to input normally, the game does this gimmicky thing where Rocco is running along and selecting the letters for the password. Not only is this cumbersome and takes way longer than it would normally, but Rocco is slipping and sliding all over the place here too. Like I said, precision platforming isn't the name of the game here, but you do need some semblance of precision to efficiently complete levels. There are times where you'll need to quickly navigate a section to keep Spunky safe or just simply be able to progress with the level. All of this is made so difficult because of the bad controls. One of the other big annoyances here is that enemies are constantly respawning. So each level Spunky is running along and it's up to you to activate switches or catapult him to where he needs to be. This would be pretty simple on its own, so to spice things up, there are enemies lurking around. Naturally, your first response might be to race ahead and clear out these enemies before circling back and helping out Spunky. Unfortunately, that's impossible here. I'd say probably 90% of the enemies in this game will just respawn infinitely. It's not even the threat of the enemies damaging you that's the worst part. It's just how damn annoying it is to have them buzzing around while you're trying to complete simple tasks. You see, Rocco is actually invincible in this game. Despite flashing as if he's taking damage, Rocco cannot die. Ignoring the stunningly stupid choice to make it seem like Rocco is being hurt while actually being invincible, the character that needs to be protected from harm is Spunky. Spunky has a health bar at the top of the screen that will be chipped away if enemies hit him or he becomes entangled with any of the many environmental hazards. To top it off, combat is so imprecise here. It's a pain in the ass to use, which makes the infinitely respawning enemies that much more frustrating. If the enemies would just stay dead, I dare say I would have had a decent time with Spunky's Dangerous Day. The puzzle solving gameplay that the entire game is built around is far from perfect too. My biggest issue is how obtuse many of the solutions are at first. This game just expects you to know all of these things. When you're first dumped into the game, you have absolutely no idea how it operates. Heck, you have no idea that this isn't just going to be a regular side-scrolling platformer. So when you're thrust into the thick of things with no hint towards what to do, it just makes you want to scream. For example, take this beach chair in the opening beach location. This is used to fling Spunky up in the air. But to a player who has just been dropped in, it looks like part of the scenery. After learning this, thanks to minutes of flailing around, I made a mental note that I'd have to check absolutely everything in each level to determine whether it was part of the scenery or not. Spunky's Dangerous Day is desperately missing a tutorial to ease you in and teach you about the puzzle solving and what Rocco can do to help Spunky. Like this section where a rat is driving a bulldozer. Here you need to duck down and then attack. Nothing in the game really points you towards this. Until this point, I wasn't even aware that Rocco could duck, let alone the fact that he could perform a unique attack in this stance. It's clunky design like this that regularly has you coming to a roadblock, fumbling around for a while, before eventually stumbling upon the answer. In the end, you're left thinking, could you guys give me some sort of assistance? Another occasion like this was when it came to the game's items. When running around a level, you'll see a pretty wide variety of items laying there, just waiting for you to pick them up. When you pick these up as Rocco, they'll be added to an inventory in the top left. Alright, this seems pretty normal. Except, when I'm scrolling through this, I can't activate them or anything. I tried literally every button, and nothing would happen. Then, by accident, I learned that if Spunky walks over a bone, it will restore his health. Oh, so Spunky has to pick these up. That alone isn't bad, but why the hell is Rocco allowed to pick them up in the first place? Everything about the way this game has been put together confuses and misleads the player. On top of that, there were a bunch of items Spunky picked up that just seemingly did nothing, so that was cool. As you proceed deeper and deeper into the game, levels become massive, sprawling labyrinths. Thankfully, the developers actually provide a great addition to help you with this. When pausing the game, you can use the directional pad to scroll around, giving you a view of the entire level. This allows you to see potentially dangerous situations and map out almost your entire run. I can't even fathom how annoying it would have been to fumble around these levels with no sense of where you're supposed to go. It's arguably the only aspect of this game that improves the quality of life. Almost everything else is hurting it. The level size can still become an issue though. While they do provide like one checkpoint per level, the levels become so big that more are needed. Being sent all the way back to the start is a massive motivation killer if you've just traversed a significant chunk of the level. It's especially annoying because once you've solved the puzzles and know what to do, a second run through is supremely dull. Spunky moves so slow that when you've memorized what you have to do, you end up just standing around begging for him to run faster. 
This even happens when you're going in blind at times. By the end of the game you'll have finally become accustomed to all of the bullshit here and be able to tackle the levels relatively easily. This results in many times where you've cleared the way forward and have to stand around for long periods for Spunky to catch up. It's just a poorly designed game. Even when you're able to get used to all of its baffling quirks, it's still not fun. There's really not that much to say about Spunky's Dangerous Day. It's a very simple game. It's the kind of game I would have expected to see on CartoonNetwork.com in the late 90s or early 2000s. At the heart of it, you're just flipping switches and occasionally flinging Spunky in the air as you slowly plod towards the end goal. There's nothing spectacular or particularly noteworthy about the gameplay, except for all of the ways it's clunky. I don't know if I've ever encountered a game that is so against guiding its players towards the right thing to do. You're given zero instructions and you're left to figure it all out for yourself. And that alone isn't necessarily terrible. There are plenty of iconic games from this era that drop you into a world and say, figure it out on your own, fucko. The early Legend of Zelda or Metroid games are prime examples of this and they're all beloved. Those games work because while they don't explicitly tell you what to do, they subtly hint at it and guide you along. Spunky's Dangerous Day features none of that. In fact, it's often pointing you in the wrong direction or outright misinforming you. I really can't get over some of these decisions. Why does Rocco flash like he's taking damage when in reality he's impervious to enemies? Why can Rocco pick up items and have an inventory if Spunky is seemingly the only one who can use them? There are brief nuggets and moments here where the gameplay kind of works. During those moments, Spunky's Dangerous Day is a barely adequate game. But for the majority of the time, Spunky's Dangerous Day is a messy puzzle platformer that has been deservedly lost to time. I could actually imagine Rocco's Modern Life working really well as a 3D platformer, something in the style of those classic Rare developed games on the Nintendo 64. It's a shame Rocco ended before that era of gaming came along and that this was all we ended up with. Next time we're looking at yet another Ren and Stimpy game. God help me. This time it's Fire Dogs for the SNES. It's the second last Ren and Stimpy game thankfully. Will this game come even remotely close to the quality of Stimpy's invention? Or will it be like most of the dreck we've seen on Nintendo consoles? Make sure you subscribe to find out.